Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the history of the Terranids and the rule books that go with them. Um, we also have a couple other books that I'm going to throw in here. The Index Xenos 2 and the Genius of the Cults, which are loosely tied into the, uh, the history of the Terranids. Um, we're going to start with, way back in, first edition, Warhammer 40k. Rogue Trader. If you don't have this book, go find one. It's, it's really, um, really cool. Because this Rogue Trader was the first version of Warhammer 40k that really got popular using miniatures and roleplay. And it's really a great system. Um, I never got to actually play it myself, but... When you're looking through here, you can really see the bones of the entire Warhammer 40k um, stories and the history behind everything. And and it hasn't really strayed too far from this original version. Um, here's the uh, the original Terranids. They look like that, uh, which they changed the the full size Terranids into Gaunts. So Terranids used to be about that big. Now they're little Gaunts, um, and they they've kind of kept the general design of that still alive. Um, but the original Terranids were, were kind of goofy because they had those, they incorporated Zotes, which were a completely different race, and then the Gene Stealers, which were also a different race. There it is. There's the original Gene Stealers. Kind of weird looking, but the general concept is there. So um, uh, what they did was after this edition, um, they were trying to figure out how to add more armies uh, to the universe, and they developed the Tyranids into this second edition codex, which is still one of my favorite codexes. The rules for second edition are still good even to this day. Um, you had a lot of um, a lot of saves, a lot of unmodified saves, really cool war gear, um, a lot of really weird things. It wasn't very balanced, but it was really fun. And um, this codex is what got me into the hobby um, and started my crazy ad addiction into a Warhammer 40k. You can see how what the models used to look like. And I still have all my army from back then. There's the original Zote design. I mean, not Zote, uh, Zonthropes. Um, all your original brood ideas and biomorphs. The artwork was fantastic. But the one problem with this is the I the concepts for all these models really weren't cohesive. Like when you had your army, they're all different colors. They really didn't match. They all looked really separate, and that's because they were separate in the Rogue Trader. Gene Stealers were a separate thing from the Turnids, and they kind of tried to bring them all together. And they got rid of the Zotes altogether and tried to do a codex, which this codex is awesome still, but the armies didn't really match. Then they kind of messed things up. We go into third edition, and and they tried to... Where is it? There it is. No, nope. I guess that is third edition. Yep, and the artwork's really cool here, but when you get into here, you look at the armies, they were really goofy looking. And then they ripped off some ideas uh, for, like, queen aliens. I mean, the warrior alien was the good thing from this edition. They changed, they completely changed the look of the warriors into this, which I think are a lot better in retrospect than the ones in this book. Um, let's see. Tyranid warriors, Tyranid warriors. I'll just skip to the back here. So like the original Tyranid warriors, you know, they look like that, which I really liked back then when I was a kid. I thought that was so cool, but Looking back, they're kind of goofy looking with the buck teeth and skinny necks and exposed guts underneath the ribcage. And then they went to that design, which I thought was really cool. So they were trying to get a more cohesive looking army. The gargoyle look changed. That was a good improvement. The, the gaunts changed. That was a good improvement. That kind of stayed the same. They didn't change the gene stealers, but they changed the hive tyrants and the current effects. It made them look terrible. And then they introduced these tyrant guards, and then they introduced these um, uh, raveners. They're just all kind of silly looking. Now the raveners, I think, was a direct response to seeing um, the, the Zerg from War Warcraft. I'm pretty sure that's why they decided to go with these guys and kind of get their design back. 
But, you know, the, even though half the army was goofy looking, they were trying. They were trying to do uh, better. There's the old Red Terror, which they still use today, which was a really great look. Carnifexes, I hated. I hate those blocky looking Carnifexes. Um, but they introduced characters finally, because Terranids never had special characters. So they had old One Eye in here. Is he the only character? One Eye and Red Terror? Yeah, so they had One Eye and Red Terror. Which finally they had special characters, which Terranids did not have. Every other army has special characters except for Terranids. So finally they had two in that book. Great. But uh, then they redid it again. And in this edition, they they fixed the designs of the Terranids yet again. Um, so the Hive Tyrants looked better. They went back to the old edition look, but made them way better. So if you're looking at at these Terranid um, Hive Tyrants. It was a cool design. They're kind of small. Then they made this one, and that was rad. Much improved, much improved. Um, now this Codex, it did improve, like the Carnifex finally looked better, and we we're finally on our way to a more cohesive army. Now they tried to change the Gene Stealers, which, um, I don't know, um, I'm not too happy with, but wait, let's go to here. Here's the um, the new Tyrant Guard, which they still do that kind of look today, which I think is a lot better than a silly guy with a shield. And then we started doing the Broodlords, which at first look, the Broodlords, they could have done better than that, and they did later. And we'll show you that. The Lictors look better. The Raveners looked way better because they were now more Terranid Warrior-like. Um, Old One-Eye looks a little bit different. You know, I I missed the old Screamer Killers, though. There's something about that old Carnifex from 2nd Edition that I really liked. Which I always go back to this book. These Screamer Killers were still my favorite. Even though they are silly looking. Now, then they went on to this edition, which I really liked. Because what they did in this one was they kind of made the Terranids, your army selection, um, seem like you're, you're designing your, your army a little bit better. They introduced the Harpies, the Venomthropes, Hive Guard, Pyrovores, Tyranifex, Turvagons. Then we got the Swarm Lord for the first time. For the first time, we finally had a really cool army commander that was amazing. Now, in this version, I think it was... This was like the dumbed-down version. Uh, let me look at the Gaunts. Well, I guess... Yeah, there's, there's one concept I want to share with you real quick. Okay, so Gaunts um, had their, you know, their regular equipment and stuff like that. But in this edition, um, the Gaunts are listed as one item, and then you would add wings or add Scything Talons or change them into Hormagaunts, Gargoyles, or whatever. It was like you pick your you pick your Gaunts like at a buffet or something. But then they finally went back to go, okay, that's too confusing. Let's just go back to keeping them as individual units. All right, so we got Swarm Lord. One Eye, the Doom of Malanti, which I think was really cool and they never released a model for it. Death Leaper, still a classic. The Parasite of Mortex, another model they never released. Yargmal Gene Stealers. So yeah, this, this was packed with you know a ton of special characters. The models finally looked like a cohesive army. You had all these big bugs added to the game. This was super exciting. I never got to play this edition, but I got the book. I started buying more models. And then 7th edition came out. So 7th edition came out. I ran to the store. I was like, okay, I haven't played since 2nd edition, but I got all these books. I've been watching the, I've been watching this army. And then 7th edition came out. I ran, grabbed the book, and I was sad. I was mad. I looked through it, and I loved the feel of the book. The art's great. I was really excited. And then I started reading the rules. And it was kind of the same. And, like, there was that guy, which was really cool. The the hard specs. But it didn't really play well. <sighs> and it had, you know, some more troop types. But then we go to the characters. I'm like, cool, where's Doom and Melanti? Where's Parasite and Mortex? They're, they're gone. And I was sad. And, and, yeah, you could have Flying Hive Tyrants, which was a, a cool addition. 
but the Terranids seemed to be less powerful than in this edition. So I felt like they were really nerfed, and I don't know why, because Terranids is a really hard army to play, because you're always trying to get in hand-in-hand combat, and everybody else is shooting you down. And then finally, out comes 8th edition, Xenos 2. Which, when these books came out, I was so excited, because you had... I could get the rules for the Gene Star Cults, Tau, Terranids, and Orcs all in one book. And this was like 20 bucks, comparing to these books, which were like 40 a piece. Now, a side note, 7th edition Gene Star Cults kind of realized how terrible the Terranids were. And they're like, okay, we need to make Gene Star Cults terrifying, which they did. This, this book has rules for amazing figures, amazing new models and great rules. Problem? There's no special characters. I mean, I guess in the lore they're trying to say that Terranids, you know, they just, they eat these guys up before anything special could happen. But I don't think so. I think it would have been cool. And I'm hoping that in a future 7th edition codex of Gene Stewart Cults, if they bring these guys back out, I want to see a special character Magus, I want to see a special character Patriarch. I want some special characters because I think they make the narrative really cool. And give me some guy that can take on a Primarch, too. Because, like, got to have those those big, nasty units um, in your in your army because everything is getting so overpowered. But, anyways, I love this book. But they could use some special characters. I'm just partial to that. Anyway, Xenos 2. The rules for 8th edition completely dumbed down compared to 7th edition, which was such such a great improvement to the game it was I, I can't even tell you how much better the Terranids played in with this book I was I was finally winning games again I was finally like having fun again and I had just learned seventh edition and was hating it but then this comes out and it made it so much more accessible and better as a game then I get this book um, last week and when it came out and I was Kind of excited because you're finally going to get the Terranids a proper codex. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I love this this book. I, I love the new Stratagems. I think Stratagems was one of the best things they could have added to 40K. Um, it just makes things a lot more interesting. Um, but the problem with this book is that it didn't really change very much. It it improves some of the points. It improves some of the weapons. Some of the some of the characters, like the Swarm Lord and um, and a few others, they needed that boost um, to make them work a little bit better. So it was really great that they're they're fine tuning the armies of the Terranids. Um, and then you have like you brought back some of the old uh, psychic powers, which aren't too too much different than from before. So they kept all the good stuff and got rid of all the stuff that just made the game too long and, and bogged down and confusing. Um, but when you go through the characters, it's the same as 7th edition. There's nothing new um, in this book, really. Um, it's just an improved version of the Index, which, again, the Index is massively superior than 7th edition right away. But um, there's nothing new. So sad. So I'm, I'm disappointed that Games Workshop didn't add any new characters or new units or anything, you know, super crazy, you know, like a like a Primark version of a Terranid creature. But you know, I guess I guess Terranids they do have a lot of a lot of big bugs that are already, you know, able to take on Primarchs. So I, I guess it's okay. Um, but it would have been extra special if they would have added back in the Doom of Malentai and. Uh, the Parasite Mortex, which I love Rippers. I think the Parasite Mortex would have been rad. So, anyways, there we go. You got the whole span of Turnids in the Warhammer 40k. Um, still, my favorite in my heart will always be the second edition. And I love the new eighth edition. I think these two are the, the gems of this collection of books. Um, yeah, so if you play Turnids, you're going to be really happy with this codex. Um, so don't get me wrong, this is an awesome codex. Stratagems, good job with Games Workshop. I love the stratagem system, 
and I love the, the new way the game plays. <laughs> it's way better than all of these books. You know, this this really fixed it. Um, but yeah, Tyranids, they're an insect race from the 41st millennium. A lot like Aliens from James Cameron's Aliens movie, and that's why I like them. Um, and uh, yeah. So anyways, that's the end of the video. Thank you.